so this is the third example of chapter eight. This is a seepage problem. If it's not given explicitly in the problem statement, we're going to basically assume the LB ratio, so L over B equals to one. So L is the length of the flow element and B is the width. We're going to assume this ratio for both example three and four. For this example, we are given this flow net underneath this concrete dam. And we're going to solve for total seepage loss per unit length, so that's small q. And then the pore pressure at A, we call U sub A. So first thing, given flow net, there are a couple of things we want to find out first. We're going to put reference datum. So let's put datum here. So for reference datum, we're going to put it at this downstream water table, which happens to be the ground surface as well. And given this reference datum, then we can define the total head at upstream, H1. In this case, is 10 meter. So that's the height of water table above your reference datum. That's the total head. And for downstream, H2 equals to zero. Then the total head loss, we call capital H. That's the difference between upstream and downstream H1 minus H2. So that's 10 meter. So that's a total head loss from upstream to downstream. And the other thing we can get for a given flow net is the these two values. First, NF. This is the number of flow channels. And for this given flow net, we have so, so these are all flow channels. So we have five flow channels. So NF equals to five. Remember flow channel is basically bounded by two adjacent flow lines. So we have five in total. And then we can also get N sub D, which is the number of potential drops. So potential drops basically each time you cross an equal potential line, that's one potential drop. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So there are a total of 12 potential drops from upstream to downstream, nd equals to 12. And we are assuming L over B is one for this flow net. And with this information, we can calculate delta H, which is the potential drop between two adjacent equal potential lines. So that's the total head loss divided by number of potential drops. So this is basically the information we can get from a given flow net. And next, let's calculate flow quantity and pore pressure at point A. So for this seepage loss, this flow quantity is small q. So that's seepage loss per unit length. This is small k h n f over n d. And this the small k here, this is permeability or hydraulic conductivity. So that's the seepage loss per unit length. And then for part two, to calculate the pore pressure at point A, and we need to first find out the total head at point A. Remember Bernoulli's equation, total head at A consists of the pressure head, we call HP at A, plus the elevation head. So first, let's find out the, the total head at point A. So the total head, when water enters soil at upstream, the initial total head is H1. And every time water crosses one equal potential line, it's going to lose delta small h energy with delta small h head. So we just need to count how many lo head loss or potential drops water experience from upstream to point A. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. From upstream to point A, water experiences 10 potential drops. So 10. Which means the energy water possesses at point A, we call HA. That's the total head is the initial one, which is H1 minus 10 times delta H. So that one is 
1.7. So this is total head at A. Oh, let's use capital A here. So it's 1.7 meter above ground surface. And then the elevation head, so now we have this HA here. So let's use capital A. And then this ZA, that's the elevation head, which is basically the distance from point A to your reference datum. And for that, we're going to directly measure this from this graph here. So that's ZA. And we are given a scale so this is 10 meter on this graph. So you can read this directly from the graph in this 50 meters below datum. Then we can calculate the pressure head at A or the pore pressure at A is unit weight of water times the pressure head. And the A here is negative 15 because it's 50 meters below the ground surface, below your data. So that's negative 50. If you substitute the numbers here, so that's 163.8 kilonewton per meter square. So that's the example three, seepage loss per unit length, and then the pore pressure at point A.